I'm Gail DePriest with the Clemson MBA, and I want to welcome you to the Business of Innovation podcast. I'm really excited about our guest today, and I'm going to actually let her introduce herself because she's doing some amazing things. And um, Marjorie, please tell us what you're doing. Hi, Gail. Thanks for having me here today. I was really looking forward to our conversation. I have a lot of titles. Um, but most of all, uh, we moved here for me to take on the role of dean at the School of Medicine in Greenville at the University of South Carolina. And I'm also an associate provost, and I am the chief academic officer for Prisma Health in the Upstate. That is so exciting. We are thrilled to have you here in, in Greenville and your family's here now. Mm -hmm. Some of your grown children have come here. So mm -hmm. how great is that? I want to talk a whole lot more about what you're doing, okay. but I do like to start guest uh, with guests by asking where were you born and uh -huh. what was your birth order? Wonderful. So I actually was born in Eloise, Michigan. But within a couple of weeks, I traveled to Appalachia, to Eastern Kentucky, where my grandparents, my maternal grandparents, were going to take care of me. My mom had contracted hepatitis B from a blood transfusion. Mm -hmm. So this was 1967. Um, and I am actually the eighth of eight children. Wow, that's amazing. So you started out there and... Um, I guess I'm curious to know, so a lot would have happened between there and your current role, but yeah. could you tell me a little mm -hmm. bit about how you came to be in the current role? I'm going to sure. jump there first. Yeah, sure. Happy to do that. So I was in academic medicine in Texas Tech uh, for uh, 19 years. Um, the FDA borrowed me for a year mm -hmm. and then kept wanting me to stay. So I stayed four years at the Office of Women's Health. Um, I also was traveling back to Texas with my husband, Steve, of 30 years. Um, we were headed back to Texas after our stint in D.C., mm -hmm. and this job opportunity came to me from my husband. He actually wanted me to be a dean of a medical school. Um, I had told him I would not be a dean of a medical school <laughs> because they don't look very happy. <laughs> <laughs> and I had had a phenomenal career, mm -hmm. and I love my career. Um, I had so much fun and so many blessings. But my dean in Texas also sent me this job. And it was such an interesting um, approach to grow a medical school out of a healthcare system, mm -hmm. so Greenville Health System. And by the time I flew in for my first interview, uh, and when I flew back home, I was hooked. I, I wanted that job so badly. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be the dean. Um, I tell people I have my my three children, and then I have 430 other people's family and children that they allow mm -hmm. us to help develop into the best physicians really in the world. Mm -hmm. And you said it's an interesting approach. Uh, we love looking at innovation. Mm -hmm. So tell me more about yeah. that. Why was it so just a different way well, I think we've all seen over the past three to four decades the dramatic change in healthcare delivery. Mm -hmm. And we have to teach our students things that I wasn't taught as a medical student about the business of medicine. Mm -hmm. So, um, healthcare delivery science is how do we deliver the highest quality care at the lowest cost, mm -hmm. create healthy populations, and also do that while giving the patient the best experience. Mm -hmm. So Greenville Health System merged with, with uh, Palmetto mm -hmm. Health in the Midlands and became Prisma Health. So we cover two thirds of South Carolina uh, for healthcare. And sadly, South Carolina is one of the unhealthiest states in the country. Mm -hmm. And I believe, and I, one of the draws for me to come here was the ability to work with Prisma Health and the University of mm -hmm. South Carolina mm -hmm. to try to create, help create a better state of health for South Carolinians. Wonderful. And I imagine as I was reading about you, your work in the Laura Bush mm -hmm. Institute, as well as your work even before that, all of that probably mm -hmm. uniquely prepared you, I would think, academically and so mm -hmm. forth for data, for the very holistic, broad view that you probably okay. needed for this role. 
I have had such an interesting trajectory to being a dean, mm-hmm. and um, and I believe that it all culminated with me being here as the dean of this medical school. God has always put me where I needed to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was a chemical engineer uh, because At I was told, Kodak. yes. For many, many, um, many, many years, I was told I could never be a doctor because we were too poor, Mm -hmm. Um, became a chemical engineer, applied to two medical schools, um, went to East Tennessee State, Mm -hmm. and then and met my husband while I was in engineering. So I needed to do that so I could find Steve (laughs) so he could be my partner Um, and then uh, worked at and private uh, private care. I was a primary care physician in Cincinnati. And then Texas Tech recruited me and I loved academics. So I'm a data nerd. Mm-hmm. I'm also, a. am when people ask me what type of leader I am, I really am a visionary transformational leader. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I love working across complex environments to create synergies where people don't see them existing. Mm -hmm. And then when that comes together, it is so wonderful and valuable. A pattern connector, Mm -hmm. which uh, some people have that ability to do Mm -hmm. and other people do not. So that's Mm -hmm. always been maybe part of who you are as you were growing and learning and moving through even earlier school system, I would imagine. Exactly. And and growing the Laura Bush Institute from Mm -hmm. nothing. And someday when we have more time, I'll tell you how that happened. But um, knowing Laura and George and Mm -hmm. just... um, how gracious she is, how supportive she is of women's health and empowering women. Mm -hmm. So I got to know uh, Laura really well, and I just admire her so much. But when I first met her, when she came to launch the Institute, I said, Mrs. Bush, you are the first thing I think about when I wake up in the morning and the last thing I think about when I go to sleep and my husband is getting jealous. (laughs) <laughs> but she had enough faith uh, to allow me to lead her institute and also mm-hmm. to be the protector of her name, sure. which is a big deal. And Huge. I took that really seriously. Huge. Absolutely. So I'm going to go back for just a moment. How did you know you wanted to be a physician and when did you know? For so, anyone who's listening, it might have a yes, dream of that. Um, I wanted to be a doctor from the time I was five and mm-hmm. my grandfather asked me, what do you want to be? Mm -hmm. Um, He was a coal miner, and uh, I thought he was a doctor because he went to the hospital every day. Mm -hmm. But he was actually a janitor at the Mm -hmm. hospital and had gotten what uh, in lay terms would be called black lung Mm -hmm. and had to retire from the mines. Um, He had to leave school at eighth grade Mm -hmm. because his dad passed away, and he had to start going down two miles into the earth to mine coal right. as an eighth grader. Mm. And so I have his diploma in my office uh, mm-hmm. framed because it reminds me of where the great stock I came from. Mm-hmm. And and he was well-read and a Baptist minister. And then fast forward in high school, we had that one 30-minute appointment, right? Mm-hmm. Not the, the entire production it is now for our children to go to college. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I was asked again what I wanted to be. And I said, a physician. And Mm -hmm. um, she said, honey, you're too poor. And no one knows you. You don't know any important people. So you need to go back and talk to your teachers and Mm -hmm. pick something else. Yeah. amazing. And that's how I became an engineer. Mm -hmm. And I love and I love it. It was so hard for me. Mm -hmm. Um, It was a challenging degree for me to get. um, But it really helped set up that analytical kind of process to think about yes. creating big change. So you know there are there are leaders that come in and they're like a whirlwind and they're like and then they leave and they haven't built the infrastructure that really um, creates stability. Mm-hmm. And then leaders like to create their own they like to leave something behind, right? So if you have a whirlwind and then you have another whirlwind person come in and you have that change leader, change leader, change leader, and they're building different things, then you don't get that stability. Mm -hmm. Um, So I have learned to be, number one, patient with change Mm -hmm. because change is uncomfortable. Sure. Even good change. And also to uh, really not allow change to be Mm under-resourced because 
sometimes, and in my own career, I've been under-resourced. And it wasn't that the people weren't behind the change or working hard. It was that we were under-resourced. So I promised myself I was ever in a position where I had the resources Mm -hmm. to distribute that I would not under-resource it. You talked a little bit about, and I love that you're saying fully, fully support and fully fund what you're seeking to do, because that's appreciated by everyone around you. But I have to go back because you said you started down that engineering trajectory Mm -hmm. and you went to work in a major corporation and then you still stepped back mm-hmm. and something inspired you something some for some reason you still took that MCAT and you still ended up going the other direction what inspired yeah. you to do that I think I always knew that I wanted to be a physician and it just but if you think you want to be a physician but you could see yourself doing anything else mm-hmm. don't be a physician yeah but I could not see myself for my life not mm-hmm being a physician. And so really, I drove over to East Tennessee State, Mm -hmm. and they had a fairly young medical school. Mm -hmm. And I made an appointment with the pre-med advisor Mm -hmm. and said, how do I go to medical school? And he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm a chemical engineer. I'm a control systems designer at Kodak. And he said, well, let me walk you over to the medical school and introduce you Mm -hmm. because you're going to go to their medical school. Wow. So So supportive. supportive. So supportive. I quit my job that day. I gave them notice and um, and studied for eight weeks, Mm -hmm. took the MCAT. And then my boss um, hired me back. I said, will you give me a letter of recommendation? He said, oh, Marjorie, we'll we'll hire you back Mm -hmm. until you find out if you're going to med school. Wonderful. So he supported you up until it actually happened. So all of a sudden there was a lot of support. Absolutely, which yeah. is why I know that, you know, my I'm I have a very strong faith and mm-hmm. I know that those things don't just happen. Mm-hmm. That, you know, I've been really blessed. Yes. Interesting. Very interesting. I love that. Um, what do you find? I'm, I'm coming back now mm-hmm. to present day. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I, I like to connect the patterns, too. Yeah. So forgive me for no, doing I, that. It's fine. But um, what do you find most gratifying about your work right now? And then I also want to know kind of what is the biggest challenge? Wow, there's so many awesome things. Um, the ability to to build an environment and an infrastructure that really motivates learning and developing those physician and thought leaders of tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, I like um, I like a challenge, and we have several challenges. Mm-hmm. Um, as you may know, I think if you've done, I know you've done your history on our medical school, but we are a public medical school, but we do not receive any state dollars. Mm-hmm. So challenges and resourcing, mm-hmm. but the generosity of the healthcare system, of the people who support us. Um, my, my big goal is to help provide scholarship dollars to every student in our school. That's amazing. That's what I would love to do. And Mm -hmm. people say, you'll never do that in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe that. I've been here two years. Mm -hmm. I have been met with such generosity, Mm -hmm. enthusiasm, and kindness. The upstate of South Carolina, Greenville, wrote a feasibility study for their four-year medical school. Do you know when that was? No. 1965, Mm. a community that waited over 50 years to have their own medical school. I mean, I, I, how could you not say we can do it? Mm -hmm. So if I ever feel discouraged or I think maybe, maybe this is too tall of a mountain, Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like, no, because we built the best medical school in this country, in Greenville, South Carolina. That's phenomenal. Do you think the word is out? Do people realize what an amazing institution is here? Not quite yet. Not quite yet. But we are working on that. Mm -hmm. I mean, we talked about things that don't seem intuitively to Mm -hmm. align, but think about economic development. 
Mm-hmm. We bring in hundreds of students, their yes. families, our faculty, our staff mm-hmm. who live here and and shop here. And mm-hmm. that economic development contribution will be announced. Our 10-year anniversary is next year. Mm-hmm big year. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be announcing um, what our past 10 year economic development has been, impact has been, Um, working with our amazing Chamber of Commerce, Mm -hmm. talking to um, Cheryl Langett, yeah, that Greenville, Mm -hmm. Um, talking to uh, the Upstate Alliance. Yes, they're phenomenal. Um, the GADC. GADC. Yes. So I'm I'm out there talking with all of these amazing organizations and their leaders mm-hmm. who really are very <clears throat> broad thinkers. And, no doubt. And so I love I love that part of my my role as well. Um, so I think the challenge for me has been to um, and as I've gotten older, um, I've gotten less. I think frenetic in my change leadership. So Mm -hmm. setting initiatives, getting my leadership team to uh, tell me the pros and cons. Don't just tell me, yes, we can do that. Tell me how, what may keep us from doing that. Mm -hmm. I have a beautiful team. Um, And really just um, being patient. The pandemic was a Mm -hmm. surprise to all of us. So that was a real uh, that was a delay in what I had seen my cha- my first few years would look like here. Mm-hmm. But but I've also um, learned so much from, from being a dean during the pandemic. And I believe that it has set us up to be, an, to have an amazing next decade of this medical school. So I was coming in saying, let's move and celebrate our 10 years, right? Mm-hmm. But instead now we're saying, help us design the next 10 years of this medical school. Mm -hmm. What do you want this medical school to be Mm -hmm. in Greenville, in South Carolina, in Mm -hmm. nationally? Yeah. And get people to looking at the future. I think we're so exhausted from this pandemic Mm -hmm. and so many people that we've lost. And so um, I really want to have people go, I want to be a part of building that vision. Mm-hmm. And I, w- I was at a panel in Boston. I was at a health panel in Boston a couple of weeks ago. And they had um, their uh, tagline for their conference. And I love it. It said, dear future, we're coming for you. I love it too. And it inspires yeah. me daily mm-hmm. because that's how I feel about mm-hmm. this medical school. This medical school, which was to grow the best doctors, but we're going to do some phenomenal research in the upstate. Mm-hmm. We are we have 1,200 Prisma physicians who are our clinical affiliated faculty mm-hmm. doing research. I have n- almost 90% of my current um, second year class who have done research. One of our second year students just won the statewide award at the American College of Physicians for South Carolina this past weekend. Um, and she's representing us nationally. Uh, And one of our inaugural graduates won the Early Career Award, Dr. Kaiser Stovall. So when you're surrounded by that amazing energy Mm -hmm. and these brilliant, brilliant people, yes, I mean, really, how could you not be successful here? Mm -hmm. So if I'm not successful, then it is on me. It is not on the school, the community, mm-hmm. the state, um, our university, um, because we have all the pieces to create greatness right here. So what I'm hearing you say is it's it's there for the taking. It's there for the taking. You are just looking mm-hmm. at all the opportunity mm-hmm. and uh, it is not lost on you. And even through COVID, mm-hmm. you see even more opportunity to mm-hmm. um, to do new and different things. Would that be accurate? It sounds like you learned yeah. a lot from COVID. I did. And I also learned, I had an aha moment during uh, COVID when we were moving back into the classroom last mm-hmm. fall. There was a, remember, we didn't have um, vaccines. Um, we we had, uh, so this was in 20, early 2020. Mm-hmm. And people were afraid. Mm-hmm. Death rates were so high. Um, and I wanted to cheer on my faculty 
to say, we can do this. We can deliver this curriculum. And they did it in stellar fashion. Mm -hmm. But what I realized was that what I needed to do was back off and say, hey, I trust you. Mm -hmm. You're an amazing educator. Mm -hmm. If you don't feel like you can go in that classroom behind plexiglass, go to the recording studio. Mm -hmm. Um, But I really want you to know how much I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. And I do trust you. And I realize I've been sort of tight um, these past few months. Mm -hmm. And I called every faculty that was going into the classroom the next week and spoke to them Mm one-on-one. And um, it was, some of us cried Mm -hmm. (laughs) during the conversation, but remember I was a new leader for them. Mm -hmm. I was only here seven months. right? So they had not had time to trust me. So um, as a leader, I really, when we get stressed, we go down the path of least resistance Mm -hmm. instead of flexing those muscles we've developed as leaders that may not be intuitive for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I had to do that. And what I realized is that no one on my leadership team was telling me, don't do it this way. Mm -hmm. So I went home and I prayed and that weekend and I said, and it just came to me. Mm you are doing this wrong right and you need to fix it Mm -hmm. before monday and so i just got on the phone yeah and then i went back to my leadership team and i said please don't ever let me keep Mm -hmm. doing something because you are brilliant leaders Mm -hmm. and i want your feedback Mm -hmm. um so don't don't think i want yes Mm-hmm. Or I want you to nod your head and agree with me. Mm-hmm. And um, and that was sort of a turning point in my leadership. The fact that you were able to <clears throat> stop and say, I'm, this isn't the right choice mm-hmm. and I want to back up and I want to I want to write this yeah. and make sure everyone knows that and then empower people to tell me what's really true. And um, so many leaders, that's a very powerful thing for them mm-hmm. to do because it definitely sends the message to yes. people around them. I'm really serious mm-hmm. about your feedback and your openness to me. We're all fallible. Yes, absolutely. Think, you know, to to say that out loud mm-hmm. to people, I like to build leaders as well and grow mm-hmm. leaders. And so if I always acted like I was, I made the right decision all the time, mm-hmm. that wouldn't be truthful and authentic. No. And it wouldn't feel good to me. No, absolutely not. I love that story. Thank you for telling us that. Um, so biggest, biggest challenge yes. right now is, mm-hmm. would you say, what is, we've talked about what's gratifying for you. You are really helping leaders on their trajectory. Mm-hmm. You're encouraging them. You're seeing the potential mm-hmm. and, and the ability for them to practice medicine and, and also do research. Yes. Um, what's your biggest challenge right now? Right now is building that infrastructure that I thought we would have built over mm-hmm. the last two years, two plus mm-hmm. years, um, but getting that research infrastructure. Uh, when our med school was grown out of Greenville Health System, no one expected us to be a research powerhouse, mm-hmm. but goodness, what an underestimation. Mm-hmm. We have the ability to partner with the largest healthcare provider in the state that two thirds of South Carolinians live within 15 minutes of a Prisma Health facility. Mm-hmm. Prisma Health is innovative. They have combined two 100 plus year old health systems and are bringing that to, I tell people if I go to the hospital in Greenville or if I go to the hospital in the Midlands, if I go to a clinic, I want to get the same high quality treatment across the entire landscape. And that's what the, um, and I think that's what the leadership wants. Um, And so now uh, I, I am really, as I told you, about helping students come into our school and not leave with $200,000 of debt. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. And Gail, you know I told you how many Clemson students that have graduated and are in our school right now. Yes, 250. 50. 250. So for the Clemson folks who are listening, can I tell you something? <laughs> Help us raise scholarships because yes. those alumni are going to give back to you. Mm-hmm. They still wear their tiger paw on mm-hmm. their on their prisma on their prisma badge, mm-hmm. um, and so uh, you have some of the most amazing alumni, and and they're 
oh, so bright and strong. And I do not want to, if they made it through Clemson with no debt, then Mm -hmm. I don't want to saddle them Mm -hmm. with $200,000 of debt. Um, And I believe that together we can do really great things. Yeah, and so much of your effort is through helping to get gain scholarships, big, but individual contributions right and so yeah. forth. I I would love to create a really big endowment for scholarships. Okay. The other big challenge we actually have a PBS show coming to film viewpoint with Dennis Quaid is going to highlight our school and mm-hmm. one of the topics that I spoke with their producer about is the pipeline in South Carolina to medical school. Mm -hmm. We don't have enough South Carolinians that qualify to be admitted to actually fill all of our seats of the public medical schools. Mm -hmm. So MUSC, UCSC Columbia, and USC Greenville, we have over 420 seats. Mm Um, And we don't have that pipeline. And then when you look at diversity, our state is so diverse. Mm -hmm. And I want our student body to look like South Carolinians. Sure. We know patients get better care. They feel like they get better care. They're more compliant Mm -hmm. when they share lived experiences with their doctor. Mm -hmm. So we have a whole team and our, our Prisma Health doctors who help us recruit historically diverse classes. Mm -hmm. So we have had two years of historically diverse underrepresented in medicine students, and the word is getting out there. And so they're telling their friends, Mm -hmm. this school is really trying to make a difference to change around equity and inclusion. Mm -hmm. So what I, my biggest challenge is that at as it relates to diversity, equity, and inclusion, Mm -hmm. rural dwelling students, first gen students, Mm -hmm. that we give them a pathway and we get them to and through and not saddled Mm -hmm. with that six figure debt so that they can go out and they don't have to choose to be an orthopedic surgeon. They can choose to be the family medicine doc Mm -hmm. um, in Oconee and and not have to worry about paying off 20 years of a loan. Um, I think that that is a challenge, but it's also a passion for me. Sure. To to unwind that. Mm -hmm. And I think that there are people out there that also believe in this Mm -hmm. and want great doctors in South Carolina, great doctors for South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And, And we can partner and corporations, and we can partner with them to get it done. I'm curious to know, of your uh, class that's Mm -hmm. admitted, what percentage of them come from out of state? So it's anywhere between 30 and 35% out of state. So we have 65% this year in state, Mm -hmm. 60% women, Mm -hmm. 40%. um, And that tends to be the national, there are, women are the majority in Mm -hmm. medical schools now. Mm -hmm. So I tell them it didn't happen with the women dean mm-hmm. because women deans are not the um, <laughs> are not the majority of deans. No. So it's only about twenty seven to thirty out of one hundred and fifty five of us are mm-hmm. women. Interesting. So you, as a woman dean, you've begun to meet those colleagues throughout the country mm-hmm. that are deans of um, other medical universities. Mm-hmm. This must be interesting conversations as you think about what you're trying to accomplish and some of the things you maybe want to change. Mm-hmm. Oh, it it's a great a group to be affiliated with, sure. right? Br- brilliant leaders. Um, I tell people that I'm an, I'm still a new dean, mm-hmm. but I'm a seasoned pandemic dean. Yes, <laughs> because in March of 2020, we were all on a level playing field. Mm-hmm. No dean had managed or led through a pandemic, mm-hmm. so we all just hit that reset mm-hmm. and really worked together. And I will tell you, my counterpart in Columbia, uh, Dean Les Hall, is um, such a dear friend to me. Mm-hmm. And we speak weekly. And it was so, it really was so wonderful to have that mm-hmm. two medical schools under one roof, you know, messaging to leadership, mm-hmm. uh, always 
on the same page and in lockstep together. And I don't know that you find that very often. You don't. You don't necessarily. And I think um, it's always good to have a peer. And sometimes you can be without a peer. You can be operating in isolation. Oh, I, oh yes. But you're describing a, a peer situation, those good conversations mm-hmm. that you can have. And and certainly as you're going through something as difficult as a pandemic. Um, I guess the other question that comes to mind is, I get a sense um, from you, and, and our our show really is about innovation mm-hmm. and and uh, creativity and so forth. And I get a sense that that's maybe always been a part of who you are, being resourceful, being creative, mm-hmm. looking at new ways to do mm-hmm. things. Tell me what it means to you now. You know, I think for me, as we talked about before, finding those areas where people might not connect a medical school where we start having conversations and helping to, and also showing that we want to be, um, you know, a good citizen of the community as an entity. Mm-hmm. Like we want to help Greenville uh, to grow. It's growing by leaps and bounds, mm-hmm. uh, but also the surrounding area. Um, I believe that we need to, um, I almost never think of something and say it can't be done. That's not really what happens in my brain. Mm-hmm. I always try to think about, well, what if we move this piece on the chessboard mm-hmm. and then we move this? And then I I will draw sometimes a diagram of called points of engagement. Mm-hmm. Like if I want to do if I want to make this change, who is going to be immediately impacted? Sure. And then who the ripple effect of that. And you can go out two, three, four, five relationships mm-hmm. and find out that, uh oh, this change may not be good for this Mm -hmm. partner, but they're five levels removed Mm -hmm. and you need to go out and have that conversation with them and get some feedback from them. So you're almost mind mapping it out Mm -hmm. with the relationships that you need to be aware of and touch points. That's fascinating. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So almost a never say never. I mean, because there are always ways to, to make things happen. And, um, and I think change for, you know, not changing for the sake of change, mm-hmm. but changing to leave uh, better than leave the school, which is an amazing school, mm-hmm. um, and the community, leave something behind when I am no longer here. Mm-hmm. So I think that people um, would ask me when I interviewed, they would say, what is your vision for our medical school? Mm-hmm. And I would say, I, I cannot even be presumptive enough to tell you your vision, my vision. I need to get here and, and help you help me build the vision. I so agree with that. Yeah. I so. And, so, um, and then they go, well, some, somebody would say, well, are you going to retire here? I'm like, what? Oh, my goodness. I must be looking really, really <laughs> tired today. Um, and so there were a lot of fun times that I look back mm-hmm. on now and I say, but what I tell people is, I would love to leave this better than I found mm-hmm. it. And that is really hard because it's already so awesome. Yeah. Mm, I love that answer. What do you think is the best advice you ever received? It's not how you lead. It's how you leave. Mm. And I am a big believer in uh, leadership transition. I've been a founder, a founder of the Laura Bush, a founder of a center for mm-hmm. women's health, um, and transitioning from that founder mindset into the next level leader mm-hmm. um, is really important. And so the best advice that I heard, and I've kept it with me for over a decade, is don't start thinking about leaving when you get somewhere. You have to be focused on that and accomplish your goals Mm -hmm. and your vision. Mm -hmm. If I start a recruiter called me the other day, well, when are you, when do you think you're going to be ready to move? I said, I've got work to do here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I go, I am, I am not even thinking of anything, but trying to move this forward for our students and South Carolinians. Mm -hmm. And so it's not even in my mindset to think about it like that. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But <clears throat> the other thing that I will share with you is, and everybody says I say this quote all the time, but I really, it speaks to me, is that tomorrow belongs to those who can hear it coming mm. by the amazing David Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I've never heard that. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Um, because of your amazing story um, and all that you've accomplished, what advice would you have for young mm -hmm. people who are still trying to find their way, mm -hmm. trying to find their trajectory? Yeah. And what advice yeah. would you have? Well, speaking for my some of my children, I have three children, blessed three ch beautiful, brilliant children. Um, and I think because they watched me be so passionate about medicine and mm -hmm. so passionate about sex and gender personalized care, mm -hmm. um, they probably thought she'll never be that passionate about anything else. Mm -hmm. But now they see me passionate in my new role and all of the bright future that we could have. Um, and I would tell someone, uh, don't, do not measure yourself against others. Mm -hmm. You are the most amazing you. You are the only one. Mm -hmm. You are a unique brand. Great advice. So find someone or someones that can really mm -hmm. help you and mentor you. Mm -hmm. And don't think that you have to find the answer right away. Mm -hmm. I was a chemical engineer. Yeah. Then I was in medicine. Then mm -hmm. I did internal medicine. Then I went to women's health. Mm -hmm. Then I went to FDA mm -hmm. and had a beautiful uh, trajectory there and loved my time there. Mm -hmm. um, I came here. So have surround yourself with people who you trust mm -hmm. and who will not always tell you yes, remember, mm -hmm. but really talk you through things and that you know have your best at heart. And you know, I, I think it's Steve Jobs who says you can connect the dots looking back, but going forward, you know, it's it's so um, it's it can be so unclear. That is so true. I want to know what you're curious about now. In life or in work, wherever or you, wherever you want to take. Where's that question. my curiosity? Yeah. Um. So this is a really big. The landscape in my mind about where we can go and how we can improve health and be, you know, be a real contributor to our state is something that I think about quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, I am, I often, I, I don't always make the right step. So I may think I need to accomplish this, but I go over in this direction. And I'm like, no, that's not really the direction we need to go. It needs mm -hmm. to be over here. Mm -hmm. And so what I am what I am most curious about or what I if we could jump to 10 years from now or 20 years from now, it's what is South Carolina going to be? Are we mm -hmm. going to be one of the national leaders and models of health? Mm -hmm. of healthiness? Mm -hmm. Are we going to be one of the healthiest states mm -hmm. in 20 years? Or, you know, I and I, I want to work toward that. And at the same time, it is going to take amazing innovation for us to get there. Mm -hmm. So you you heard or read about maybe the Prisma Health and Siemens 10 year partnership mm -hmm. around artificial intelligence, predictive analytics, how do we manage health with data and we do it at point of care for that patient? That we don't wait and collect data and write a paper and publish mm -hmm. a paper. Right. And I mean, which is all important and, mm -hmm. I, and I support all of that. I'm not downplaying that, but we want to change. I, I want to be in that office. I want to change your health for the better today. Mm -hmm. And I have this amazing amount of data. And I have the ability to predict what the best course of action will be for you, Gail, not for the next patient or the mm -hmm. last patient. And I believe we will get there. Mm -hmm. And and I just and I'm so excited. I'm I'm excited for South Carolina. I'm excited for Prisma. I'm excited for all the people that will benefit from that innovative attitude. Mm -hmm because we are not here to remain stagnant. We're here to create motion. 
forward to the future. Right. That's brighter than the past. Mm -hmm. So that's incredible. We're so fortunate to have you. Um, I want to ask, how do you want to be um, remembered? And you've made several references mm -hmm. to wanting to leave things better. Mm -hmm. But how do you want your friends and family mm -hmm. to re to remember you? <laughs> I have a big family, <laughs> and uh, and I'm a strong personality in that family. So um, you're the baby, yeah. Right? And they, yeah, <laughs> and they 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 love me so much and give me so much grace. Um, I would want to be remembered. Uh, for someone that worked for the good of the whole mm -hmm. instead of the good of the one. Um, I would want to be remembered as a leader that actually not only left better than I found it, but it the change was so inculcated in the fabric of the organization mm -hmm. that it couldn't be unwound by other leaders. Mm -hmm. So things that we all need, right? Diversity, equity, and inclusion for all. Sure. We need that. And so make those changes, but make it part of our culture. Mm -hmm. So no matter who sits in that seat. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I would say is that I don't care if anyone remembers the name Marjorie Jenkins. Mm -hmm. And I don't need any statue. I just, that's not what fills my vessel. Mm -hmm. It's really knowing that I've done my best and hopefully have made some of those integral changes that can't be unwound. Mm -hmm. Thank you, um, Dean Jenkins. And I so appreciate your time and your vision is just amazing. We're so fortunate to have you here. I'm excited Thank to you. hear, and especially the broader view that you have for South Carolina and the health of our state. It's going to be really uh, interesting and fun to watch what you do. And I love that you're inspiring all these young lives, because I heard you say that, too. I have my children <laughs> here, but I have 400 plus over here yeah. that I'm really helping them. I hope to help them as they make their way into the world and their contributions are so important. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. And can I say one more thing? Sure. Because I don't want to leave this out. I did be just become a grandmother and I love the fact that my adult children Two have moved here. The third one wants to get to the East Coast. Yeah. And as a parent, I think there is no greater joy mm -hmm. than when your children choose to be near you mm -hmm. and that they tell you you, you are a great parent mm -hmm. and that you were a great parent, even though you know you misstepped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that I am, you know, married to my best friend oh, and my I biggest love that. champion. I read that somewhere Steve. about you, 30 years. That's incredible. Yeah. So but, hu huge on the personal side, yeah. huge on the professional side, mm -hmm. and so much uh, so much to be grateful for. And nothing I did to deserve all of that. <laughs> I mean, really just blessings. But Gail, thank you. Thank you thank for the you. work you're doing thank and getting you. the word out. I appreciate the invitation to be sure. here. It was so much fun. And um, I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. I appreciate that.